Support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States. And obey the laws of the United States. States and of the state of Maine. And the state of Maine. That I will. That I will. In all respects. In all respects. Observe the provisions. Observe the provisions of the Charter and Ordinances. Of the Charter and Ordinances. Of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. Of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. And statutes. Statutes in the state of Maine, Maine. will faithfully discharge, <coughs> faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office, and the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. And the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Now have the roll call by the town clerk, please. Chairman Chapel. Yep. Councilor Cogsell. Here. Councilor Dahlbeck. Here. Councilor Jordan. Yep. Councilor Linnell. Here. Councilor Marvin. Here. And Councilor McLaughlin. Here. I want to rise and please join me in the <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I have a motion on the meeting number 15 of the 93-94 session, held May 9th, as corrected, please. Move acceptance. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. At this time, we have the spot for the citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Anybody at this time that would like to come up, give their name and their address and talk to us? That's good. 
Now we get to a good part of it, and I'm tickled to death. You know, I'm going to take the liberty as chairperson to give all of the little presentations out now because i got a crowd. And so if you came for something else, you're going to have to wait. But this is an ideal time for our presentations. I'm going to start off tonight. I've got one, two, three, four. So if you bear with me, I've got to get something out of my car. <laughs> Not quite, don't worry. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Debbie. Happy birthday to you. Speech? Shall we have a speech? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you got it wrong. <laughs> I came over this morning before I did put the candles on, but I see that they had the right amount of balloons up in their office, so I'm not in the spot tonight for having the age on there. Any of you fellas interested, you can see on the cake. <laughs> Is this thing working? Or you can hear me anyway, right? Yeah. This is kind of nice. I got here tonight and the, to the 93-94 town council from parents of the class of 1994. Thanks for your support for our students. And Kerner. for the project graduation oh, committee. Yes. So we got Janet for you. <laughs> I know what they are. And Jean <laughs> for you. That one's for me. Nobody's going to get that. These are cups with all the graduates' names on them. For you? <laughs> With the graduates also received. Bill Jordan? What is these? There you go, go William. Bill Amell? And Dick Dahlbeck. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't got to go to my car this time, so don't worry. This is always a good spot of the job for a chairperson when it comes to giving out uh, awards and presentations. It, it's, it's really great. Uh, tonight we have two gentlemen from our fire rescue wet team uh, that are being honored for 50 years of service. Would those two gentlemen please come forward at this time for me? Who are they? Are you here? Now we realize that the fire department recognized these gentlemen, one last year and one this year for their many years of work, but the council also wanted to add this, they might find room for it, you know, in the kitchen or down cellar. The, uh, I'm going to read just one of them. It says, whereas Arthur J. Kennedy and whereas Alvin E. Jordan have provided over 50 years of service as a volunteer member of the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department. And whereas these years of devotion to the fire service have created great sacrifice with thousands of hours spent at fires, training sessions, and company meetings and activities. And whereas this half century of service has enabled citizens to have their property protected from the ravages of fire, and whereas the town council wishes to acknowledge the significant community spirit shown by Arthur J. Kennedy and Alvin E. Jordan. Therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council in Town Council Assembled, does hereby thank Arthur J. Kennedy and Alvin E. Jordan for all they have done for the town of Cape Elizabeth as a 50-year volunteer for the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department. They are an inspiration to the entire community. 
dated this 13th day of June, 1994, at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and signed by all seven of the council. Alvin E. Gordon. Oh, sure, we'll, we'll hold hands, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're better in case that one doesn't come out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Jim Murray has a special award tonight. Jim? Now, it, now it's time <clears throat> to go after the chairman of the town council. <laughs> uh, last August, uh, a few of us uh, were in Dallas, Texas for the installation of our fire chief uh, to the International Fire Chiefs Association. And along with us was our town manager and Mr. Chapel. So one day, boring, nothing else to do. <laughs> Billy, smile. <laughs> nothing else to do, and the town manager being the historian that he is, they decided to seek out the residency of Dwight David Eisenhower. So they jumps in the car and they head south some 300 miles and ends up in Abilene, Texas. Well, <laughs> Come to find out, Dwight David Eisenhower was born in Abilene, Kansas, some 1,500 miles away. <coughs> so the only thing in Abilene, Texas, was a Dairy Queen. <laughs> so they proceeded to go to that, and that got messed up, I understand. <laughs> so, Earl, Earl, would you please come here a minute? <laughs> and Debbie, I wish you'd come over here uh, in the absence of the town manager. Seems <laughs> <laughs> we got the birthday cake. <laughs> Irv, I'd like to present you a map of Abilene, Texas, so the next time you're down there, you'll know where you're going. And Debbie, in the absence of the TM, here is a uh, map of uh, Abilene, Kansas, Eisenhower's birthplace. So maybe between the pair of them, they might be able to figure it out. Thank you. I told you to sit still. We got a lot more. Uh, at this time, I've got a spot here for a uh, sixth grade class. I'm going to let them start that off. They probably know exactly what to do, and I don't. Okay, it's all yours. <laughs> Good. Yeah, so the camera can get them right across. They can the line up right here. Yeah. And you in front. <coughs> there you go. Uh, I'm Eugenie Moore. I'm you need to speak into the microphone. Over here. The mic. Right here. Bring them right. They wanted to make speeches, but I said no, right? <laughs> um, I'm a sixth grade teacher at the middle school, and we raised uh, a lot of money selling humanities, which we are all wearing. And... Um, the class decided to donate 25% of the proceeds to the town of Cape Elizabeth for the Great Pond Project. So um, Hillary Boxer, who is representing Mr. Conley's class, and Leah Con now I'm so nervous, Leah Wilson, <laughs> from my class, and Shannon Bailey. You can stay right there, Shannon. Ms. Ramsbotham's class, Alicia Chang from Mr. Record's class, Dominique Calouette from Ms. Benoit's class, Troy Hanna from Mr. Casey's class and Andrew Love from uh, Mr. Doan's class, all representing the sixth grade. And we are very happy to present the town of Cape Elizabeth with a check for $500 to be um, used towards the Great Pond Project.
For the town council, I accept the check for $500, and we will see that it gets to the right spot. I think this is what Cape Elizabeth's all about. I'm very, very pleased to be standing here and see this happen tonight. It's just wonderful. The students can feel good, the teachers can feel good, and the parents can feel good, and the council feels good. Just a great evening. Thanks a lot. Now I have one more proclamation. Will those students all come forward again? <laughs> Please, and their teacher. Come on, you're young, you can make it all right. <laughs> Let's be honest with it, I goof say so. <laughs> Makes you come again. This we want you to have over there at the school, and you remember tonight, we hope. Whereas the high school graduating class of the year 2000 is now the sixth grade class at Cape Elizabeth Middle School, and whereas the class of 2000 has raised funds to improve the local environment for their future and for the future of those who will follow them, and whereas the funds raised will specifically be utilized for the improvement of the Green Belt Trail around Great Pond, and whereas the town is indebted to the class of 2000 for their work leading to the donation and for the generous contribution of the funds. Now, Therefore, be it resolved by the town, Elizabeth Town Council, in town council assembled, that we hereby thank the class of 2000 for their donations and for concern for the environment, and we congratulate them as well for completing one more year of school as they look forward to their graduation in June 2000 and to their lives beyond. Dated the 13th day of June 1994 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and signed by all seven members of the town council. I want to thank Mike McGovern and uh, Jack Roberts and Phyllis Coxall for helping me get this together. You're doing great. Hey, a little contribution counts. Now, you know, uh, you never get a captive audience like this. Don't you dare go, you students up there. <laughs> you, you stay right here till I'm done. When I get to item number one, which won't be too far, another five minutes or so, why, well, you can go like little birds if you want to, but until then, you stay right here. <laughs> the, uh, the council chairman gets a chance at the end of the year when a new one is going to be elected very shortly to say a few words about what happened this past year. I could talk to you know for quite a long time about the achievements. You see them all around. Some are good and you're in favor of them. Some aren't so good and I don't want to hear about those anyway. And I decided tonight, no. I was going to talk to you about what I feel about Cape Elizabeth. I knew I was in trouble in this job when I went up to the Augusta when Mike McGovern was sworn in and got his plaque that's up here and also the plaque for himself for being the main manager of the year. We had about 50 or 60 of us that went by bus and private car and had our own tables, very nice. And they asked me as chairman to come up and receive the plaque and say a few words about Mike. So I did. I got the plaque and then I said, now I'd like to introduce the Cape Elizabeth Town Council and Mike McGovern's friends. And uh, I said, were those please, and there was about 10 tables of them, please stand up. And they did, very nicely. And I said, now I've got just a few remarks tonight, and I'm going to ask them to remain standing until I get done. <laughs> the whole darn group, as one body, sit down. <laughs> and that's the control I've had all year. <laughs> I want you to know that I've really enjoyed this past year. I've had a great time, personally. I think it's a wonderful place to live, Cape Elizabeth, to raise children, to retire. My wife and I have been very happy here for the past 40 years, 
and have had two sons and a daughter and two grandchildren so far graduate from Cape Elizabeth High School. We're very proud of it. We complain about our taxes like everybody does, you know, now and then, especially during revaluation. And then we take a good look around, see all the things we have, the ocean, the fort with its wonderful museum and gift shop, the schools, the open spaces, the village charm. These are so many others that make us aware that it's all worth it and more. Cape Elizabeth is a good example of how, how a town should be run. In fact, we are the envy of many. If you think I'm wrong, talk with some of our neighbors. The council, the school board, town manager, department heads, and all of the employees work well with the concerns of the citizens being their top <coughs> priority. However, the real reason Cape Elizabeth is so successful is volunteerism. And this I would like to concentrate on for another minute or so. What a town for volunteers. You have to actually be working with it each day and have to realize its value to all of us. I want to read you a list of the boards and commissions. There's just one a part of volunteering. Board of Assessment Review. Personal Appeals Board, Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, Conservation Commission, Trustees Riverside Cemetery, Trustees Thomas Memorial Library, Cable TV Committee, Historical Advisory Committee, Sewer Advisory Committee, Community Services Advisory Commission, Fort Williams Advisory Commission, Recycling Committee, Arts Commission, Board of Voter Registration, ADA Committee, Land Use Process Review Committee, School Building Committee, Family Fund Day Committee, and a new one that we're starting, I hope, this next month, the Zork Committee. That's just the committees and boards. That group there, I had the town manager, I told a group about it about a month ago, that, that just that group is 12,300 hours of volunteer work each year. Put that down to $10 an hour, it's $123,000. That does not include 40 or more at Fort Williams, volunteers for the fire department, volunteers for rescue, volunteers for civil emergency preparedness, volunteers for the wet team, volunteers at the school department. Many, many. In other words, you could take that 12,300 hours and you could double it easily with the volunteering that's done at Cape Elizabeth and you will come up with a quarter of a million dollars every year of volunteer hours that are given free and with a smile to Cape Elizabeth and that's why the town runs the way it does. What an impressive statistic. I know I am low and very, very confident that this would be a lot more than that if I had the time to get with everybody and take down actual hours. This is a guesstimate on the small side. This is what Cape Elizabeth is all about. Extraordinary volunteers. I want to thank them and every one of them, and there's some sitting here tonight and there's a lot more at home, from all of us. That's my message to you about what's happened this past year. Thank you. Now, I won't mind now if you skip out, but don't do it in mass. Go singly. <laughs> Item number one. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Reports and correspondence. <clears throat> Councilor Marvin. Mr. Chairman, um, last Wednesday, Councillor McLaughlin and I attended the GP COG General Assembly in Portland. At that time, we approved the budget, we revised bylaws, and we elected some new officers for GP COG. 
At this time, I'd like to congratulate Councilor McLaughlin on her presidency of GP COG, her past presidency. She has just finished. She had a wonderful year. She did a great job and has handed the gavel over to a gentleman from Westbrook. And we look forward to having her back in Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor Mark. Anyone else? Councilor Nell. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, just about a month ago, actually to the day I think it was, I attended a seminar on effective budget, budget presentation sponsored by the Maine Municipal Association with Town Manager Mike McGovern. And uh, I was very grateful for the opportunity to be there and got a lot out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One announcement for the council particularly to take note of for the zoning ordinance rewrite committee we do have one change in the membership of that committee Steve Etzel has tendered his resignation and he is being replaced by Alice Rand who is former member and chairman of our planning board one other thing I just wanted you to be aware of Two or three weeks ago, I was fortunate to join the Maine Development Foundation's Community Leader Exchange. We participated in a three-day exchange traveling to Aroostook County. There were representatives from business, government, education, and social services in the group. We will be hosting our counterparts from Aroostook County um, this fall, I believe, in October. I found it extremely enlightening. I really had never been to the county before except to pass through. It's beautiful countryside and wonderful people up there. And I was glad they brought me back, too. Thank you. <laughs> we saw two moves. Good, good. <laughs> I just have two. Uh, number one is tomorrow's election day, and I can urge everybody. I should have done it when everybody was here. But anyway, they'll, most of those are teachers, so they'll be over there anyway. Uh, we should get out. And be as strong as we can. The Secretary of State says if we have 20 percent, we'd be doing well. Let's Cape Elizabeth do 35 or 40. We should be able to. It's very important, very important to the running of the country, as we all know. One other uh, thing that I should report on, in the uh, minutes from the last meeting, uh, we approved them, and, we, and we, it, it's right that we do so. But the town manager working with the town council chairman shall make a recommendation at the June 13th town council meeting for a process to review how the property could best meet the town's short term and not immediate need for improved space for public safety services, referring to the filling station next door. We purchased that officially Monday afternoon at 1 o'clock. The manager and I have met, and the process has started, but until the leases are signed and so forth, there was no necessity for anything further at this time we'll keep everybody informed when the lease is assigned and what we plan on doing in the future so that has been covered but not officially <coughs> that being any other reports okay item one to consider the election of a town council chairman and take any necessary action mr chairman mr Dalman. it is uh with great pleasure and I guess some sadness because of uh, this being a change of the guard and maybe because I'll get a new person on my right and we'll have to adjust to that but uh, it is definitely with great pleasure that I would like to move the nomination of Councilor William H. Jordan as Town Council Chairman for the 1994-95 year. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Bill, you want to change seats? No. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can follow you with the things that you've been going on tonight here. Yeah. Well, you can sit over here and try. I'll do it. I'm going to sit next to Debbie now. Just switch the name tags. Yeah. Don't forget your mug, Bill. Oh, he won't steal it. <laughs> Yeah. No, we don't need to change the name tags. Uh, Miss Efficiency is at work. Thank you. Uh, well done, Phyllis. Uh, so, uh, Janet, I'll oh, pull my <laughs> Me too. 
I have one little duty I think I ought to do before I get started on the agenda. And Councillor Chapel, would you like to come down here? You seem to like this pond. You handle it very well. Wrong paper. This gentleman and I have a great time together. We uh, attend a uh, few hockey games and what have you, and usually meet up in the lobby there during the intermission and what have you. So we have grown to, even though I've known him for a good number of years, and, and uh, we have grown to be great friends, and I don't know as I can follow his act as far as uh, keeping people involved and what have you. But one thing I'd like to do is just uh, make a couple of comments on what I feel that you've accomplished with, the, with your year as chairman. And I have a little plaque here. And uh, you kind of stole, stole a little of the thunder by uh, mentioning the purchase of the uh, station next door, which you was very much involved in, and the recommendation for the Municipal Facilities Committee, which you chaired uh, several years ago, and the purchase, and it was one of the recommendations that you people had for the public safety needs in the future. And last November, the citizen of Cape Elizabeth approved a bond issue improvements for the middle and elementary school facilities plus in addition you presided over several of the meetings and, and worked on extensive public comment. I think you had a spot at the IGA which you took up daily to answer a lot of people's questions. Also in uh, December one of the goals that you had the town completed negotiations with the state to acquire the poor farm property from the Thomas Jordan Trust. And the municipal budget was adopted with, with no tax increase. And speaking of being lean, meetings became shorter, and council chairman even became thinner. Viv <laughs> truly show in many ways that you can do more with less. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. It would have the meeting all over in about 15 minutes, but we haven't really got started on it. But I've got a couple of comments that I would like to make uh, as far as some of the things or goals or what have you that I'd like to see accomplished this year. And I wish to thank the council for electing me as chairman. Whether they, I can keep them in line for a year, I don't know. It's been a hard job for uh, Irv, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Much has changed over the years, but I've always enjoyed working with my fellow councillors and helping out citizens with their problems, questions, if possible. This year, we should complete the study what to do with the Thomas Jordan Trust and actually begin helping needy citizens with a trust fund. Now, there's, I believe there's a possibility if we can come up with that, if we can. Uh, you go out of Cape Elizabeth, there's no needy citizens in Cape Elizabeth, but I think there is a few around that could use a helping hand. Next, we need to continue to look at customer services in the town responsive and always to the citizens. So if there's any citizens that have a comment on what they would like to see the council do, 
don't hesitate to contact one of the counselors or drop me a note or even give me a jingle. This year, we would like a need to begin paving, paying, excuse me, that sounds better, paving, but paying the principal on the school bonds. Other costs are going to have to be restrained so that taxes do not become a bigger burden to the taxpayers. I just hope that we can do quite a lot there. I'm going to work hard in that direction. We should invite all businesses in the town to a meeting to ask what the town can do to help them in their businesses. And we should look at all the action we make as a council and ask ourselves if our action make Cape Elizabeth more affordable. We ask the state and federal government not to pass more mandates unless they know where the cost is coming from. We should always calculate the cost of our own town mandates on citizens, is, is the cost truly worth the benefit of this for the citizens? And I look forward to seven, as a council chairman with the staff, the boards, and volunteers, and there are many of them, and the citizens of the town for this year. Thank you. So we go move on to item two. Mr. Chairman. I move to adopt the rules of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council as presented. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any comment? One way. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Item three, to consider the appointment of the Finance Committee and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move the nomination of Richard B. Dahlbeck to serve as the Finance Committee Chairman and the Town Council to serve as members for the 1994-95 year. Second. Any comment? All those in favor? Item four, to consider the appointments to the Ordinance Committee and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move the nomination of Phyllis C. Consul to serve as the Ordinance Committee Chairman and E. Irving Chapel and Richard B. Dahlbeck to serve as members for the 1994-95 year. Do we hear a second? Second. Any comment? All those in favor, raise your right hand. We kept the ordinance, the ordinance committee over there, didn't we? Again. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't catch it. Item five, to consider the appointments of, appointment of the Appointments Committee and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move the nomination of Janet L. McLaughlin to serve as the Appointments Committee Chairman and Jean Ginn Marvin and William S. Linnell to serve as members for the 1994-95 year. Second. Been moved and second. Any other comment? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Excuse me, Sailor, something out here. Screwed up here. Yeah. Here I got it. Item six to consider the election of a representative to serve on the Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee and the General Assembly and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move the nomination of Janet L. McLaughlin to serve as a member of the Council of Governments Committee, Executive Committee and General Assembly, Jean Ginn Marvin to serve on the General Assembly, and Michael K. McGovern to serve as alternate. I hear a second. Second. All, any comment? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Item seven, to consider the appointments of the council representative to serve on the board of directors of Regional Waste System Incorporated and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move the nomination of E. Irving Chapel to serve as Cape Elizabeth's representative to the RWS Board of Directors and William H. Jordan as the alternate. Second. Comment? All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? 
Item 8, to consider the appointments to the Poland Area Comprehensive Transportation Committee PACs and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move the nomination of Michael K. McGovern to serve on the PACs Policy Committee. Second. Second. Do I have all those in favor? Item 9, to consider the appointment to the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to move the nomination of Jean Gibb Marvin to serve as Cape Elizabeth's representative on the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee. I'll second. Comment? All in favor? Raise your right hand. That takes care of the root, I shouldn't say the routine things, that takes care of the yearly routine uh, committees and what have you. Next, we will move on to a public hearing for a liquor license for the good table. Is there anybody out there who would like to speak, good or bad or indifferent, as far as the good table is concerned? Hearing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. The item to consider to consider approving a liquor license application for the Good Table Incorporated and take any necessary action. I'll turn to the clerk. Is everything in order? Yes, it is. Uh, the council may be wondering why this item is before you since a few months ago you adopted an ordinance, with, an ordinance which states a renewal of a liquor license does not have to come before the council for, for a formal public hearing. Since then, the Good Table has incorporated. I contacted the state and they deemed that as a new liquor license, therefore we had to treat it as such. The second part of the ordinance revisions that you made requires uh, me to send an application to the chief of police, the fire chief, and the code enforcement <coughs> officer and health officer. Uh, they have reviewed the application and as far as this application, they have no problems with it being granted. So I recommend that you uh, grant the liquor license for a full-time spirituous, minus, and malt liquor license for the Good Table, Inc. Uh, and Mr. Kostopoulos, uh, the owner, is here if you do have any questions. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move approval, approval of the liquor license application for the Good Table, Incorporated. I'll second it. Any comment? All in favor, raise your right hand. Next item is a public hearing on dead end road standards. Chairman, Mr. Uh, Shaw. Um, Mr. Well, Chairman, do you want to make? Shall I just give some background yes, before please. we open the public hearing? Yes. Okay. What you have before you is the result of the town deciding not to pursue, pursue um, an appeal on a court decision. Uh, we decided instead to clarify our ordinance on dead end roads. The intent is not, um, has not been changed. Uh, the recent court uh, decision interpreted that the current language as applying only to proposed roads within a subdivision. An alternative approach which would have to have dead end road length measured from a point where only one means of access exists and including the length of any existing roads in the measurement. In either case, some clarifying amendment should be added to the subdivision ordinance. Um, what we have today before you is applies to existing as well as proposed roads in new subdivisions. The proposed text has been recommended by the town attorney and is based upon language which has been upheld in similar lawsuits. We also have had review from the planning board and they, um, what appears to be a change in what we recommended is just the addition of definitions for dead end road and for a through road that the attorney inserted. See anybody from the public? We'll open the public hearing now. From the public, would like to care to speak on the item? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and move on with item 11, to consider the proposed revisions to the subdivision ordinance regarding dead end roads and standards and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the dead end road standards as presented. Second it. 
Been moved and seconded. Anybody, any comment? All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Item, item 12, to consider a request from Council Cargershaw to reconsider item 168 from the May 9th, 1994 meeting, which requested the Maine Department of Transportation to review the speed limit on Mitchell Road and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I have um, proposed a reconsideration of this item because I felt that during our last meeting we did not thoroughly explore what the requirements were of the statute and that we should uh, present to the uh, Maine Department of Transportation specific um, standards that we wanted them to consider instead of just a general review. So I'm moving that we reconsider that item and set for a public hearing next month um, the proposal that the re uh, speed limit on Mitchell Road be reduced from 30 to 25, either the entire road or a portion of it. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. This item doesn't uh, call for a, a public hearing uh, and people from the odd audience, but uh, I can guess I, that... Could I make a comment? Yes. Yes, I just want to go back on that meeting and mention that I was against the vote, which is on record, uh, but I was very disturbed that we did not have a public hearing. We had some people who had a position, and this is not to say whether that position was right, wrong, or indifferent, but who came and expressed their feelings, and without a public hearing, the town council went ahead and made a vote. So I am very happy to see a reconsideration of this. Anybody else have a comment? Council? Um, I, I have a, several comments. Um, one thing I'd like to mention that is over the weekend I conducted a survey um, to determine the sentiments of area residents uh, with respect to this issue. And uh, there, are, there are copies on the back table. If, if, it's, uh, if there are still some there, I, I hope there's still some there, but if, if anyone wants one and there is not one there, please let me know. There are some there. Okay. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, one thing that is important to remember uh, that we will take into consideration is that I issued uh, 167 surveys and of those uh, uh, 20, 24 came back, uh, 10 uh, households responded by telephone. Uh, of those 10, 8 were against changing the, the speed limit while 2 households were for it. Um, the respondents voted uh, 20 to 2 against holding a public hearing. They voted 20 to 3 in favor of letting the police chief address the problem with more enforcement. And they voted 12 to 5 against changing the speed limit with 7 undecided. I know that uh, my feeling on this was that at the previous meeting, eight people spoke uh, on the side of, of, of those who wished to reduce the speed limit. And so uh, my feeling, w and, and none spoke against them except for the police chief. Now, if it were the other side, in other words, if it were the uh, people who were against lowering the speed limit, were not represented, I would be more inclined to vote for a public hearing. But I, I feel that uh, the people in favor of this were well represented. Um, uh, and uh, we, we voted on it. Uh, we took into consideration the comments of the police chief. Um, 
the police chief was against solving the problem, uh, uh, the speeding problem, by lowering the speed limit. He felt that that was not the best way to solve the problem. I think we're all in favor of solving the problem. Um, so, and we voted, in fact, four to three in favor of sending um, this decision to the Maine Department of Transportation uh, immediately. Uh, I personally wanted to give the people on Mitchell Road the benefit of the doubt, uh, although I was inclined to um, go along with the Chief's recommendations. Uh, I thought, well, uh, bicycle season is upon us. Um, uh, kids will be getting out of school very shortly, and that if we were really um, interested in uh, addressing the safety issues, that in, instead of putting off the decision until after a public hearing, that we would um, kick it right up to the Department of Transportation immediately. And uh, for those reasons, uh, uh, I was uh, um, in, in favor of sending it up to them right away. Uh, if, on the other hand, uh, the police chief uh, recommended lowering the speed limit, I think we'd have, uh, it would be a different story. I think I would be much more likely to write a stronger letter to the uh, Department of Transportation uh, insisting that the limit be lowered. Um, but that isn't the case. We had a divided vote on the council, which I think uh, represented uh, uh, fairly uh, feelings in town. Uh, I'll, I'll point out that the survey, uh, depending on which question you looked at, went from two to one to seven to one uh, against uh, changing the speed limit. So uh, the council was uh, uh, somewhat divided on the issue. Uh, the people I surveyed, and, and I went through, I tried to be uh, more than fair in the houses that I went to to give the survey to. I, I started out going up one side of Mitchell Road. I knew that some people on the other side uh, were on the, actually lived on the other side of the road, and I made sure I dropped off uh, uh, some surveys uh, to them. Uh, I went down uh, each side street, um, and on those side streets, uh, I generally just picked one side of the road, uh, and then later I went, uh, came from the other end of Mitchell Road and, handed, and, and put them in uh, the newspaper, um, well, they're not mailboxes, but uh, the plastic boxes that people receive the newspapers in uh, until I ran out. Um, so um, my feeling is that uh, I'm inclined to go along with what the police chief said, um, but to give the, the uh, folks uh, that were felt very strongly about this, um, I I uh, was willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, even though I didn't entirely agree with them, and send it to the Department of Transportation. And I feel at this point that uh, we should uh, let the Department of Transportation uh, make uh, any recommendations that they see fit. And in the meantime, uh, as most of the people that I polled said, um, I think we can certainly insist that the police chief address the problem as he sees fit, uh, I think it's a very difficult to ask someone to do the job and then tell them exactly how you want them to do it. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, we need to listen to him. That's what we're paying him for. And, uh, and one more point I'd like to make. Uh, he talked before about the critical rate factor. And um, I know uh, that uh, one way they try to quantify these concerns is to come up with some sort of an objective way to um, uh, quantify uh, what's going on in a, in a, on a street or an intersection and so forth. And one point the chief made, which I think we need to re uh, remember, is that the critical rate factor, I think, for Mitchell Road is 0.72. It's actually down from the previous year. And uh, I know that, uh, that that's something that was looked at when they put the uh, sp 
and the traffic light in at the corner of Spurlink and 77. And uh, although there was a lot of opposition to putting the light in, they said, you know, on paper, the, the critical rate factor, which I can't remember, recall at the, at the moment, uh, uh, warranted putting in a light. Um, and uh, uh, on Mitchell Road, it, uh, it doesn't appear to do that. However, I am willing to let the Department of Transportation, they are the traffic safety, safety engineers, uh, render their decision. And we've already voted to, to ask them to do that. And I think it's uh, uh, prudent and uh, in the interest of, of getting to the bottom of this quickly, uh, I think we should leave it alone. Thank you. Anybody else want to make a comment? I just want to say I had a few calls. Most of my calls went in not to lower the speed limit. So the item that we're discussing now is a reconsideration. So if nobody else, you have a comment? Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When I voted last month, in opposition to sending the recommendation to the, Depart the State Department of Transportation, I quite fully understood that we did not have a strong recommendation going to them. And therefore, through my awareness and understanding of the way they operate, that we would probably not see a change in the speed limit on Mitchell Road. And that went along with my thinking. It still goes along with my thinking. Um, I've heard some comment that perhaps we could get the speed lowered on part of Mitchell Road. And it's my understanding that for enforcement purposes, at least, you need a good half mile of a set speed for it to be valid, for people to make the transition and such, and for proper enforcement. And I'm not sure that the people who spoke, and quite, in fact, I'm fairly sure that some of the people who spoke last month, anyway, would not if we went with only part of it, it would not be the part that they wanted lowered. And I think if it goes beyond the current request and people are disgruntled with what comes out of the State Department of Transportation, then we're going to see people keep pushing this until it becomes very expensive for the town. I, too, as the chairman has, have had an fair number of phone calls. In fact, I had some in response to Council Linnell's survey and have had people talk to me about this probably as much as anything else since I've been on the Council. Uh, since what we're achieving right now goes along with my way of thinking, I'm not going to be in favor of a reconsideration. Council Dalbot. Yeah, I, I just want to add uh, on one thing. I just think it is a, an inappropriate process for the council to bring an item up and allow certain citizens who happen to be there to speak without having made notice of a public hearing and thus allowing all sides to understand the issue and come. That was not a public hearing. Certain people were here and they were uh, very nicely uh, allowed to uh, speak their feelings. But then the council jumped ahead and acted on that without a total public hearing. And something like this that impacts directly so many people should have had, I think process-wise, a public hearing. Bill? Chairman? Council Marla. Um I agree with Councilor Dahlbeck that we did not use the best um, public policy procedures that we could have at our last meeting if, if our intention was to hear a lot of different people talk about this subject. However, I really didn't feel it was necessary for us to have a public hearing, nor do I feel it's necessary for us to have a public hearing now um, for the simple reason that our police chief gave us the information that we needed. I think our police chief does a fine job. He made a recommendation. I think we should follow it. Thank you. Councilor Cogshaw. One of the reasons why I asked for this item to be con reconsidered is because um, of all my years of being on council, I've never seen us act quite so hastily. And I do not feel that it was the proper public process at all 
to have jumped as quickly without having both sides <coughs> uh, given the opportunity to make comment. Our decision may still be that we do not feel that speed limit needs to be changed, but I'm thinking of the process and keeping it as clean and straightforward as possible. Councilor Nell. Um, I, maybe I'm missing something here, but I, I know that while it wasn't a um, bona fide public hearing, it certainly was a public forum. <coughs> Again, uh, the people that spoke, uh, the ones that are asking uh, for this reconsideration, are the ones who, uh, in terms of having the opportunity to speak, spoke with, you know, eight to nothing. I mean, they won. Um, they asked us to, to ask the De Department of Transportation uh, for, a, for a, a ruling on this. Uh, now, if they didn't get a 7-0 vote, uh, when they had eight of them speaking uh, uh, fairly passionately uh, for uh, their side of the issue, um, I think that's enough. Uh, it's not like it's it's not a situation where they weren't represented. They they uh, uh, were represented very well. They asked to have it go up to the Department of Transportation, um, and that's exactly what we did. And what and while they would have liked to have had a 7-0 vote, uh, perhaps instead of a 4-3 to three vote, um, uh, they it went up. It went to the DOT as they requested. And I haven't, uh, uh, I, again, I think it would be a much different story if the people on the other side of this issue uh, were requesting this reconsideration. I Council Dalba. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just question whether, there's, whether there is any such thing as a non bona fide public hearing. Well, uh, I guess. Uh, I'm not aware of any statute that requires a public hearing, per se, uh, for this issue. Um, but I, uh, we, we talked about it um, last time, last meeting. It was certainly a public forum. Uh, if, if we're concerned with having a public hearing to see that all, that, uh, all sides are represented, um, uh, I think the, the side that uh, is, is perhaps disgruntled certainly had an opportunity to be heard. Without appropriate notice, I would question that. I, w I would think that uh, the way I would look at it, that we should have had an item on the agenda to set a public hearing for the review of it, which is, I don't believe the item stated that, a public hearing. So what we're after here tonight is reconsideration and then if we vote in favor of the reconsideration then we could set a, another item on the agenda and set for a public hearing to me would be the proper method of doing it. We're after a reconsideration right now. Motion. The motion was for both. So we should, you, you want it down as two motions. You want to break the first motion in half? The first motion should be... Okay, then I move, I will change my motion and have it read uh, for a re request... Where is it here? Get the right item. Um, item number one, I request a um, reconsideration of our vote on item number 168 from the May 9th, 1994 meeting. Second. You have that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Everybody understand the motion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oh, excuse me, I was not going to vote. I'm sorry. You voted. I voted. <laughs> All, I voted. All those opposed? One of three, I'll stick with it, but I didn't intend to. Three or four. Three or four. Huh? Three, three, three or four. What'd you say? It was three to four. Yeah, I said four to yeah. three. Is it? Be real careful with that one. Oh, excuse <laughs> me. So, it doesn't carry as far as, re as, far as reconsideration. That's it. It's over. 
So we move on to item 13. That's right, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Item 13, to consider a report from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission related to revenue producing options for the Fort Williams Park and taking necessary action. Anybody care to make a motion? Anybody care to make a comment? Could we hear from the do we have someone? Do we have someone here we from, do. I didn't they, see him from the Paul Williams? I didn't happen to see him. Mr. Chairman, I'm Paul Thielen, Chairman of the uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Um, I'm here uh, to answer any questions that the council may have. Uh, I would like to note if I may, a housekeeping matter on page four. Um, you made a math error. Uh, inadvertently, uh, in the second par well, the first full paragraph, the last sentence, um, we indicate that uh, the sentence reads, deducting these revenues from expense produces net expenses of only 44,000, actually, Reading that now, I've, we've added a zero in there as well, which should, be, <laughs> should read 44,000. Or, and it has 0.1%, and that should be 1% okay. of the uh, town's non-school budget. And uh, that figure is reiterated, I believe, on page 19, also as 0.1%, and in fact, it should be 1%. Uh, other than that, I hope the report speaks for itself, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. Anybody have any comments as far as the report goes? Yes, Council Collins. Well, I just have a co comment that this was um, a fantastic piece of work, extremely well done, very thorough, and I'm very impressed. Thank you. Well, I thank you. I thank you on behalf of all of the Commission. Three other members are here tonight as well. Um, I can speak for the Commission to say that it was a lot of effort on their part. I appreciate your saying that. Council Marvin. I'd like to add my thanks. I was one of the members of the Service Delivery Option Committee that kind of asked for this report, and I'm sure that you've probably used our names in vain, perhaps, at some <laughs> of your meetings. Um, but I, I really do appreciate the report. I was particularly impressed by your fundraising ideas outlined on page 9 of your report. I think there are many good ideas and useful ideas there, and that as a community we can put those to work and perhaps meet your needs as well as the request of the Service Delivery Option Committee. Thanks. Thank you. Council Dalbert. I'd like to move acceptance of the report and uh, have it uh, uh, set aside for discussion at a council workshop. Do I have a second? Second. Yes, Council Council. Um, my comment is just to Mr. Dahlbeck. We usually just acknowledge the receipt of a report, not acceptance. Whatever. <laughs> I, I let Debbie take care of those. Okay. <laughs> Makes us look good. <laughs> so your motion is you acknowledge the receipt of the report and thank the committee? I would say is that, that the way we have it, Debbie? In workshop. And, workshop. and discuss it at a workshop. To which we will invite these folks, I would hope. Anybody got any comment with that? Good job. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Very good report. <laughs> Item 14. No, excuse me. Item 15. You can, no, 14. You're right, you're right on track. Oh, uh, Fort Williams twice. Oh, rock climb. Yeah. Consider a recommendation from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding rock climbing and take in necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we table that also to a workshop, probably the, could be the same one when we meet with the Fort Williams Commission about the previous report with just acknowledged this year. I'll second that. And moved and seconded. Anybody else? 
All in favor, raise your right hand. There's somebody in the audience who. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I would like to have you. I would like to hear your comments. Yes, please. Sorry, I didn't know there was somebody in the audience. Uh, my name is Peter Beal. Uh, I represent a group of uh, climbers in southern Maine that calls themselves the Climbers Alliance of Maine. Uh, since last fall, uh, I've been dealing personally with Mike McGovern on this issue. Um, I'd like to uh, primarily discuss <coughs> the uh, recommendation, the statement of the advisory committee. We presented uh, the advisory committee with what we wanted to see happen as far as climbing in the park went. Um, I just would like to uh, put forward for your consideration the first sentence in the uh, recommendation says the town does not grant permission for climbing. Uh, this to me is, uh, runs contrary to the recommendations in the second paragraph where if the town doesn't grant permission for something, uh, then the town has no business uh, worrying about anything else. Um, so what I would like to see is the town uh, grant permission or work in some way with the climbers to make sure that climbing is uh, an accepted uh, use of the park as I discussed with <coughs> Mike McGovern and uh, the advisory committee. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think it would be appropriate to invite this gentleman to our workshop. Yes. I do. Second. And perhaps you can tell me when that is. Well, you yeah, when we know, we will. Okay, we I'm, know. I'll be leaving the state at the end of July, so that's the only, uh, the only consideration. I can hand you over to somebody else, but just that's the only okay. thing I want to add. If you stay in touch with Mr. McGovern's office, he okay. can let you know. He, Great. But we probably won't know for that's a few fine. days. I just wanted to be sure if I, I could help that way. Anything okay. else? Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. We, yeah, we did that. <laughs> we didn't I make did. a motion. <laughs> I didn't. There was not oh, a yes, excuse me, I did. I'm sorry. Better I'm two sorry. votes than no votes. Yeah, the, you excuse for one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, confusing the chairman again. Chairman does. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Item 15, to consider a proposed statement of policy on the acceptance of gifts, of parcels, and easements, and taking any necessary action. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, again, I'd like to move that we table this to a workshop discussion, in light, especially in light of the views that we've just received from the planning board. I think some of those are fairly substantive and we need to have a good conversation about those. I'll second. Been moved and seconded that we move, that we uh, take this up at a workshop at a later date. All in favor, raise your hand. Item 16, to consider approving a request for a pole location on Wells Road approximately 1,000 feet from Sawyer Road and taking necessary action. I believe Debbie has a couple of words on it. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On your podium tonight, you have a letter from Mr. Blaine Hopkins of the New England Telephone Company uh, requesting that the town council uh, do not act upon this tonight. Um, the belief is that the pole will not be um, moved, so this application is no longer needed. Mr. Chairman, based on that, I move that we table this item indefinitely. I'll second. Been moved and second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Item 17, to consider a proposed lease of the service station located at 314 Ocean House Road and taking necessary action. You all received a copy of the lease. Um, does anybody have any? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve the lease as edited and corrected by the our town attorney of the with the facts of June 9, 1994. I second that. Been moved and seconded. Anybody else can comment? Yes, Debbie, please. If the motion could please include that you would authorize the acting town manager to sign the lease. So moved. Agree with that? 
Second. Anybody else? All in favor, raise your hand. Right hand. Can't write it. <laughs> right to my left. I'll do it. Doesn't count. Your left. Okay, yeah. moving right along. Item 18. To consider a report from the Appointments Committee regarding vacancies on boards and commissions and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, we have an outstanding vacancy on the Recycling Committee that was created when uh, Patricia Twitchell was uh, left that, re that committee and went to another one. The Appointments Committee is pleased to make the recommendation of Nell Wing to serve on the Recycling Committee um, to January 1st, 1996. Nell has expressed an interest in being on this committee and she's, we know she's a very enthusiastic worker and will be a good addition to that group. Therefore, I move the appointment of Nell Wing to the Recycling Committee. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. All in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Thank you. Everybody what? In favor? To consider a request to provide construction and maintenance easement side to a right of way extending across Lions Field property and taking necessary action. Mr. Chairman, I'd ask to be excused from this uh, as there is a possible conflict of interest. Council agree? All in favor of him being excused? Do you have anything to add? Or oh, do we have somebody here to explain this? Mm -hmm. yeah. We have Mr. Linnell's representative is here this evening. <clears throat> FOB. <laughs> I believe you all have this plan in your packet. Um, my name is Steve Harding. I work for Oast Associates. We're assisting Mr. Lamel and Ms. Godier with their uh, road construction project uh, along uh, Lyons Field. If you'll recall from last uh, winter, you provided, a, you agreed upon a 40-foot right-of-way to provide access from uh, the, the, base, the existing uh, gravel road by the baseball field, which would be on the left-hand side of this, this print to the property of uh, Mr. Linnell's, which is on the right-hand side. The uh, brown shown on this print is the proposed roadway extension. The green would be the side slopes of the roadway within the 40-foot right-of-way. The area that's cross-hatched on your prints and shown here in yellow would be the area that we would ask for a temporary construction and, and maintenance agreement. Uh, specifically, this is needed to uh, provide uh, adequate uh, erosion control uh, pr provisions and to uh, ensure that we get adequate cover over a culvert crossing and be able to uh, stabilize that culvert both the inlet and the outlet with stone riprap. Uh, we're asked that you uh, consider the supplemental indenture that's before you and I'll be here to try to respond to any questions or comments that you may have. Could tip that mic up and make yourself more comfortable there. Anybody has any comment? Questions? Concerns? Yes. Councilor Cargoshaw. I guess this really isn't a question of, of the gentleman. It was just something in the cover letter that I respond to later. I'm sorry. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I would move uh, acceptance uh, of the uh, right away uh, as uh, described. Second that. Been moved and seconded. Yes, Council Cogshaw. In our letter from our town attorney, um, there is the comment that the town may want a plan to be recorded um, just for future reference. Um, many years down the road, perhaps when Mr. Linnell no longer lives there or someone else's building back there. Um, I, was, I was hoping that this would be part of the process. Is it, you had a comment? Uh, 
we're willing to work with the, the council whatever they feel more most comfortable with if if they feel that the plan needs to be recorded we'll certainly do that you typically record construction and maintenance fees? Not typically, but uh, if it will help clarify this and with the indenture, it may serve to supplement, give uh, additional in, uh, information if somebody's researching it in the future. If it makes the, the council feel more comfortable, we'd be willing to do that. Was that your intent, Council Council, to uh, record the construction and maintenance easement that goes beyond the, what we've already? Yes. Yeah. Right, this new sure proposal this evening. Also because uh, wetlands and a critical wetland area is adjacent. And this would just prove that it had all been acceptable for the town at that stage. And if anything, it might have protected Mr. Linnell in the future, or future lot owner. How long does that easement stay in place? Forever and Forever, ever. right. In that case, I agree with Council Council. So I ask that... Um, would Mr. Dahlbeck reconsider a modification to his motion? That would include that the, the plan would that be the town that the plan be recorded in the registry of deeds. I would so move. And then that, and the acting town manager be authorized to sign the required documents. That should be within the so motion. included. Everybody understand the motion? Mm -hmm. All in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Yeah. Item 20, to consider authorizing several transfers of balances to the departments prior to the end of the fiscal year and take any necessary action. I believe that is for you. You all received a copy of the recommendations from the manager and what have you, and does anybody have any comment one way or the other? Do you have any comment? No. I would. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move the uh, transfers as outlined in the town manager's uh, letter dated uh, June 2nd, 1994, uh, which transfers uh, $10,000 to the town council account 130, 3,000 to the MMA insurance pool 170, 10,000 to the police department 210, uh, 4,000 to the dispatchers. Uh, which is 220, $700 to the town hall 610, and six and $400 to the community center 615. I'll second that. And moved and second. Anybody comment? All in favor? Raise your right hand. That completes the agenda for this evening. And what we have left is citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Anybody out there have a comment? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> my name is Jack Lustig, uh, Kildeer Road. Uh, one item that I wasn't planning to speak upon, but it came up this evening, and I don't know the specifics of it, uh, I know back many, many years ago I was involved of the transfer of Lyons Field to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, with all of this easement, are we in, has research been done, are we in any violations of the conditions of that transfer where the Lions Club gave the property to the town? I believe that should be researched to prevent any future problems. Uh, number two, I was prepared with a bunch of other comments about Mitchell Road speed limits, but I think they are irrelevant right now considering the action. But I just would like to express my dismay at some of the actions of our town council. Uh, Mr. Linnell, if you will please, that this town council could take action on the basis of eight people coming up and expressing an opinion unpublicized, which did not allow other people to come up and consider it, give opposing view. I think it was a hasty thing to do, 
I think that the citizens of Cape Elizabeth should be a little bit concerned that we could take an action on the basis of just eight people coming up here, which counted for probably a private meeting, as I look at it. Um, there are many, many things that go on, and I do trust, before anything is done on Cape Elizabeth, that in the town and on Mitchell Road specifically, that we give everybody the chance to be properly notified, come down, and to be recognized. The other thing that I was a little bit surprised at, and I'm not speaking for myself, but we had one gentleman sitting to my right that was requesting permission during this discussion by raising his hand to come up here and talk. He was not recognized, and yet we had a gentleman that was sitting here regarding the rock climbing that isn't even a citizen of Cape Elizabeth, and he was extended the privilege to come up and address the council. Um, maybe it's something that's unusual due to the hot weather and the sparsity of the crowd here, but uh, these are some of the things that I've seen this evening that do concern me a bit, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, and as far as the right-of-way that we just discussed, that was research properly and what have you, and they... I'm not familiar. I was involved with the transfer as a very young member of the Lions Club back at that time. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank the previous gentleman for uh, bringing to your attention uh, the fact that uh, the council did act hastily. Your name, please. Ed O'Neill. I've uh, been a resident of the town for about 27 years. I've generally been um, impressed with the fairness displayed by this body uh, when making decisions, but share this gentleman's feelings of absolute dismay at how you could make a decision based on a small band of people coming down here and exerting pressure on you. I'd like to share with you some statistics. There are 109 homes on Mitchell Road. There are 323 homes trapped by Mitchell Road. Five under construction and a lot more lots that are yet undeveloped. I really don't think that fair play was exercised by this council. I am a little heartened by the fact that you did act a little sheepishly here tonight and, and uh, reconsider the fairness of what you did. However, it disturbs me to think that perhaps some other group of people led by somebody who uh, had technical wherewithal could intimidate you into making a hasty judgment when so many other people would be affected. Um, I have some opinions on the, on the actual subject, but I don't think that's appropriate because you dealt with that issue. My concern is with the council's methodology in arriving at decisions and whether or not they bother to do their homework. I would hope that in the future you would do so. Thank you. Yes. Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to request that when you meet to discuss... Your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Cheryl Milligan. I'm the director for the museum at Portland Headlight. And uh, there are several proposals in the Fort Williams report that are directly related to the museum. Um, and so I would re request officially that when you meet to discuss the report that I be invited to attend the discussion. Um, there are some uh, physical inaccuracies in the report as regards the museum and uh, also would remind you that we incorporated under a 501c3 incorporation for an educational organization and because of that uh, there are certain transfers of funds that are not allowed by law. And um, that's why I'd like to be a part of any discussion that takes place uh, about this report. And I read the whole report and I really think they did a terrific job until they get to page 18, which is where <laughs> I ran into all my problems. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be notified. Thank you.
because as I read the report, I felt there were some things, and I think it's a proper way to workshop the report and get those things ironed out. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. Second. We move and second we adjourn. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Yeah. 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 Just peel back your drawer. Yeah. Yeah. See you for that. See you for that.